Hi, I'm here with Jim Campbell Claus to do a season update. Um, Happy New Year and welcome, Jim. Good on you, Mike. Thank you. Cheers. Um, give us a rundown of what's been happening yeah. so far. Yep. So the season's tracking along a bit behind. So we um, we're only just starting to get to Verizon, which is probably two or three weeks behind where we've been the last ten or fifteen years. But if you go back to longer records, we're probably you know close to on track. Yep. Yeah. So we, we are the. Um, I think last time we spoke. We were we're just coming into a little bit of warm weather. We've had some nice warmth, but we've also had quite a lot of cool weather. So we had that very cool spring. December was cool, and uh, January started. We've had we've had some warmth, but we get a couple of warm days, then it cools, cools right off down. Again. Yeah, so, yeah. so we're tracking along nicely. Vines are all in pretty good nick, but yeah, probably a couple of weeks behind. Oh, good. Um, Disease-wise, what's been happening? Yeah, it's. It's all been pretty good. Normally, just before Christmas, we get uh, we get lots of calls saying, "Oh, I've got this grey stuff in my vineyard." <laughs> so we didn't get those calls, but we are starting to see a little bit of powdery. It's been yeah. a pretty nice season for powdery mildew, with um, with overcast conditions, a little bit of humidity, not much rain, but you know, a bit of humidity and a bit of cool and warmth. Yeah. Powdery seems to like that. So definitely seeing a little bit of powdery mildew. We haven't really had any rain to speak of, so no no downy mildew. Mm -hmm. Botrytis is interesting because it was a um, because we had that sort of prolonged flowering, cool conditions. Yeah, the conditions were probably pretty good for botrytis infection during that period, um, and not that we're seeing botrytis around, but I would suggest people have a good look inside bunches. Uh, particularly where we've had any botrytis before yep. and you know it's a good opportunity to put your last there's quite a few options now for for later sprays but if you're about to put bird necks on it's a good opportunity to get a bit of um, uh, botryticide protection on because you know it's what are we middle of January I don't think we'll be picking In March until... yeah much until early March and it will go March April hopefully not into May <laughs> yeah that's... yeah Oof. So disease-wise, not too bad. Uh, pests, um, you know, the, the, the old normal ones we saw early in the season, has, haven't really seen a lot of pest pressure. You, you yeah, seen... so I've seen a bit of looper in Cabernet, so further yeah. south. Yeah, right. Um, and varying numbers and amount of damage, yeah, so yeah. some places we put a spray on and others not. So, yeah, OK, yeah. yeah. I haven't seen a lot of that, so it's interesting. There'll yeah. be a little bit of damage on the berries, which will also increase that disease susceptibility for botrytis. So yep. another reason to, to think about that. So I guess what we're worried about now is bird pressure. So yep. we're just seeing the first little bit of Verizon, a little bit of color in some of the earlier varieties. And bird pressure, I think is gonna be pretty high. Yep. The last couple of years, we've had great Maori blossom. There is a little bit of bud forming on a few trees, but- um, It's not huge numbers though, is it? So no, yeah. it looks pretty sporadic. Yep doesn't look like it's going to be a heavy flowering and it looks like it's going to be quite late. So, yeah, bird pressure is going to be huge. I'd be, yeah. Get the nets on, get them yeah. secure, so get your yeah. try to spray on, yeah. put your nets on. Yeah, yeah. And then, I don't know where we're standing here. I mean, these these vines are, the you know, canopies are in really good nick. Uh, we've, we've sort of, we didn't have a lot of rain in spring or early summer, but we had those cool conditions yep. and I think it enabled the canopies to maintain function and health. Obviously irrigation is really important because soils are pretty dry now. Mm -hmm. Vines are coming into Verizon. Grapes love a drink at Verizon. Yeah. Big drink at Verizon. Helps helps fill the berries, helps, you know, helps with that ripening process and helps keep everything fresh. Really important for your whites obviously to keep them fresh and mm -hmm. ticking over, but also important for your reds. Berry size at the moment I, I think is down. Yeah. yeah so like um mm -hmm. And that's, we've got pretty dry conditions. So if you've got water um, and it's coming to Verizon, yeah, I, I'd be, I'd certainly be putting a bit of water out on, um, on them coming into Verizon and then, you know, managing your irrigation regime depending on soil moisture and, and vine condition and so on. Yeah, but no, nah, canopy's looking good. Fruit volume is, is a little bit all over the place. Yeah. I think um, Cabernet and Savvy Blanc both look pretty good. Anything on canes generally looks okay. Stuff on spurs is a little bit more variable. I think some of the early varieties are maybe down a bit. Um, the the, the mid-season, the late-season seem to 
fruitfulness seems to be pretty good. Bunch size looks okay. I think you mentioned earlier that flowering, because we had that cool weather. There was a lot of trash and yeah. junk in, yeah. in a lot of bunches. Yeah, so flowering was, you know, protracted over quite a long period. So, yeah, there's, there's a little bit of uneven flowering, as you say, there's a bit of trash in bunches. So they're all not ideal. Yep. But, um, yeah, I think for reds, you know, once we get colour change, we'll do a, a green bunch pass and and see what that looks like. The whites, it's not quite so important. I, you know, I don't think there's enough variation to have to take off late ripening bunches on whites. It's pretty good demand for whites. Yep. Sauvignon Blanc and Chardonnay particularly. Yeah, so ticking along pretty well. Oh, good. Um, yeah, pretty much sums us up for, so far for yeah, this year. We I just get the Botrytis sprays on, put the nets on. Get some water. And keep the water up. Keep some water up. Yep. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I, I guess, you know, keep protected from fire and birds, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah, so, I don't know. I think we've got a, we've got a, a reasonable weight for harvest. So, you know, make sure all your harvest plans are, are in place. And, yep, so we've yeah. probably got, what, six weeks before? Yeah, we so just, just talking about that, you know, normally we've, we've finished spraying at Verizon. And normally that's sort of Christmas. We generally finish, we might do one more yep. with the reds. But this season, yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're spraying now. We'll, we'll review, you know, where we are in the region. But yeah, we'll probably do another spray in the reds anyway. Just, you know, we've got long periods to go. If everything's clean, that's good. But, you know, late season leaf, um, would, would powdery slows things yeah, down. Yeah. Or rust so. mite, is that an issue in a cooling Oh, year? yeah, absolutely. Rust so. mite can be an issue, and yeah, there's nothing you can do about it once you've got it. So, mm. yeah, look, a, a later season uh, sulfur spray. There's a couple of other products that you can use depending on where your fruit's going. So, mm -hmm. yeah, just, just look, look at what you can use. Do a good monitoring pass before you sort of close everything up yep. for the season. Yep. Yeah. All right, beautiful. Thanks very much, Jim. Cheers, Mike. Cheers. Good day.